Okay, so what we're going to do uh, with this problem is we're going to calculate what the free energy is at a temperature other than 25 degrees Celsius. So when you calculate delta G, one of the things about the table, right, and when you're looking at the table, I mean, I guess it should be obvious, but it says, right, all this, and it's all at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, so it doesn't, if you want to do something at a different temperature, how do you get that number? So as it turns out, what we do is we usually estimate that number uh, by assuming delta H and delta S don't change with temperature much. Now, that's not to say that they don't change, but for example, let, let's say uh, delta H changed with temperature, right? So I have, here's energy on this axis, and then this is my delta H, right? And let's say I do something that alters the energy of this lower state and it goes like that. Well, the upper state might also increase like that much. And so delta H, you know, would be about the same, provided that these are changing about the same rate. Same thing's true for uh, S values, right, the delta S values. So what we'll do is we'll assume that these are relatively constant. And we'll just plug our temperature in and see what delta G is uh, when we plug in our new temperature. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful about uh, in these kinds of problems is units. So the problem that we're going to deal with is this one here, problem 61. And I've got most of it already worked out. Um, but uh, I just thought I'd read through the questions. Let's consider this reaction. Estimate delta G for this reaction at each temperature and predict whether or not the reaction will be spontaneous. And then, and then they say, you know, assume that delta H and delta S do not change too much within the given temperature range. Basically what I said over here. So we're going to plug these numbers in. So I went ahead and uh, pulled all the numbers from the table. I did actually want to show you something else about the data. This is the reaction we're dealing with. Uh, delta H and delta G's of formation are zero, but entropies are actually measured. So one of the mistakes that students will make is they'll just assume that for oxygen, S is zero, uh, but because of the third law of thermodynamic, or sometimes called the zeroth law, um, there is actually a value for that. Now, uh, if I want to calculate delta, it's going to be delta H for this reaction. All right, it'll be products minus reactants. Uh, I've already done that. And so delta H ends up being minus 116.2. You know, using the same process that we used before. And delta S equals um, minus 146.6. Uh, we're going to be calculating um, delta um, G from this data, but if you're interested, you can actually calculate it from here and then actually calculate what delta G is based on this data at 25 degrees Celsius. It's not a perfect match usually. Usually it's just a little bit of a difference. Okay, so delta H, delta G, sorry, is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And then uh, we're going to go like this, minus 116.2 kilojoules plus, sorry, minus. And then we're going to put the temperature in. And the first temperature we'll do is 298. So that is the 25 degrees Celsius one. And we're going to multiply that by uh, delta S. Um, I'm sorry, this is joules per Kelvin. And so I have joules per Kelvin. Um, now this is kilojoules and this is joules. So again, that same trick, right? A thousand joules per kilojoule to get them on the same unit. And then we'll go ahead and calculate that value. Uh, that comes out, it turns out if you do the calculation, minus 72.5 kilojoules. Okay, so at 25 degrees Celsius, this is the value for delta G. And if it, delta G is negative, that means the reaction is spontaneous. What we'll do next is we'll look at 855. I'm just going to do it on here because I've run out of room already on the other slide. So I'll say delta H, delta G, sorry, I keep saying that, is equal to delta H. 
that was minus 116.2 kilojoules minus and then T which would be 855 Kelvin and minus 146.6 .6 joules per Kelvin and again 1000 joules and a kilojoule so when I do that calculation I get 9.14 kilojoules positive so at that temperature the reaction is non-spontaneous so one thing to do uh, in these kinds of calculations is always try to verify whether or not that makes sense so I got this number right on the earlier one I got minus 72.5 kilojoules spontaneous and then I got 9.14 kilojoules non-spontaneous um, does it make sense that it's non-spontaneous at higher temperatures? And one of the things that would indicate that is that if you have a decrease in entropy during the reaction, and you'll notice there's two moles of gas here, and then three moles of gas there, delta S would be uh, negative, and the result would be at higher temperatures it becomes less spontaneous. Um, in fact, if you just double check, right, that value makes sense compared to what we calculated before. This says it's spontaneous at low temperatures because delta H is negative and becomes non-spontaneous at higher temperatures. So all this, these calculations sort of make sense with respect to each other.